Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Quick straw poll for everyone out there. Have any of you visited the Forbes website recently? I found myself doing a bit of research for an article and I ended up there having a browse through some of the tech things and it became almost impossible to read any of the content because of the pop-up ads and auto-playing videos everywhere. And it reminded me of when I first interviewed Gary Vaynerchuk and he said, he said, He remembered when he visited a website that had a giant Samsung ad covering the entire page. And yeah, he couldn't close it down no matter where he tried to pinch or find the X or close button. And he said that he knew that there would be a team of marketers somewhere patting each other on the back because of those huge ad impressions numbers. But as the person that saw that ad, He promised himself that he would never buy a Samsung TV because that ad had ruined his browsing experience. So after that experience that I've just shared with you and my flashback of that conversation, today I've invited Sherlyn Dahl, CEO of Method Media Intelligent. And he is someone that lives and breathes the digital measurement space. So today we're going to be talking about ad fraud, ad tech, and how they're helping advertisers with the path to be more successful, as well as exploring some of the tech trends in the industry. How does that sound? Whew, glad you said that. <laughs> so buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to New Jersey so we can speak with Shailen Dar, CEO from MMI. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are? And what you do. My name is Shalandar. I am the founder and CEO of Method Media Intelligence, known in the industry as MMI. And uh, what we do is make sure that online advertisers are actually getting what they pay for when they're buying ads uh, across different environments and just making sure that it, the ads are served to humans and actually viewable on a screen and actually served into the contextual environments that they target it. Well, first of all, a big thank you for taking the time to sit down with me today and share your story and and share your insights too. But just to set the scene, what exactly is ad fraud and and just how big of a problem is it and how does it happen? So defining what it is uh, depends on who you ask in the industry. Uh, The supply side platforms will have a different definition than the buying platforms. Agencies will, and advertisers will have a different definition. So everybody's exposed to different things because this supply chain is very complex. And so the rate of how big the problem is also varies by where you sit in the supply chain. But generally, ad fraud is when online advertisers are basically duped into buying ad space that is not what it was purported to be. And so in the realm of the internet, you know, the differentiator between what is human initiated and what is robotically initiated is not a simple thing. Uh, It's just servers communicating to each other and, you know, determining whether it was a human that initiated that server signal or whether it was just automatically generated uh, is a complex problem. And in advertising, you have less time to make that decision because these transactions are done in 50 to 100 milliseconds. So ad fraud is a problem that, you know, you have media and the marketing and advertising industry shifting into a very complex technical environment. You know, we're not talking about billboards. We're not talking about uh, banners on a bus. Uh, We are not even, it's more complex than television in terms of delivery and measurement. So the overwhelming problem in ad fraud is a kind of lack of acknowledgement in terms of the mixing of the media industry with web technology. And as this is a tech podcast, the, the question I've got to ask is, how is it that the bad guys are using technology to commit this fraud that we're talking about here? My The simplest way to look at ad fraud is headless Chrome on AWS. Mm. So 
a browser that is designed to be automated, deployed in a data center that is designed to scale very, very easily is kind of the easiest way to deploy ad for, uh, any sort of ad fraud effort. And if you're, you know, there's a lot of narratives in the industry uh, that talk about, you know, the cyber criminals or, you know, using malware to do this and that. <laughs> ad fraudsters also like efficiency. They're not looking to scale by infecting a new mobile device or a new uh, PC on a regular basis. If they can just turn the dial up on a few AWS instances and go from 500 browsers to 5 million browsers, then that's what they'll do. And so the problem, the source of the problem has shifted to data centers. And that's actually where we focus our efforts. Which I suppose the, the big question that I've got to ask is, is what can advertisers do about it? Advertisers, first of all, need to understand the problem and how it actually gets to them through the actual uh, ad tech supply chain. So it's very important to have a third party measurement vendor that actually measures every single ad that gets served. But it's also important to make sure you're actually looking at the data and using that data to be able to make better decisions in the future. You could think of it like airport security. You can sell metal detectors and um, scanners to an airport, but if they don't use them and they let half the passengers go through without any checks, that's not real security. And so it's not enough to just have the tools. It's about using them properly and strategically. And as someone that is working right in the heart of the digital measurement space, I've got to ask, are there any myths or misconceptions that you see and you hear that just frustrate the hell out of you that you you want to lay to rest today? I think uh, I would say half of our sales process is dealing with myths and misconceptions. So the biggest misconception that I see is that you can detect bots before you pay and actually bid for the ad space. So the, the kind of disconnect there is all you're really able to see before you bid on that space is the server side signals. So similar to, you could look at an art auction, you know, you have a painting in the front of the room and you have a bunch of people sitting around the room. And of course you want to bid based on what the seller or auctioneer is saying about that piece of art. But then after you win the actual auction, you still have the chance to inspect it and actually make sure that it is what it was said to be. And so in advertising uh, online, you have that same dynamic where before you actually bid on the ad space, you're just getting kind of the seller declared version of the characteristics of it. And it's only after you bid that you actually get to inspect with client side measurement uh, where that ad is being delivered. So We see far too many advertisers and agencies getting comfortable with only using pre-bid solutions and not doing that full client-side measurement after the fact. And this feels like a great moment to introduce the listeners to Method Media Intelligence and and your approach to some of the problems that we've raised today. So can you expand on that and tell listeners that maybe hearing about you for the first time a little about your approach and and that Method Media Intelligence? Sure. So MMI was based on a lot of research. And that research was based on my experience actually working at ad networks that monetized a lot of this cheap fake traffic. And sitting in that part of the supply chain, it was very very evident to see that the current solutions were not catching nearly uh, enough of the traffic that was being funneled into these exchanges. So we really put our heads down and looked at what is the source of this traffic? How are they getting it at scale? How can you just have unlimited traffic? Where is that coming from? And what we found over 2015, 2016, and then also in 2017 was it was all moving to data centers. The ad networks that we were seeing selling this traffic were racking up AWS bills of 100,000, 250,000 a month and able to generate two to $5 million in revenue on a monthly basis. And the profit margins are you know, 50 to 100%. There's not a huge upfront cost uh, in terms of doing that. So when you're looking at the overwhelming majority of the 
fake traffic coming from data centers. You have to look at a solution that actually identifies based on those differences. What we saw in the industry was they were using behavioral signals. So what's the linearity of a mouse stroke? Uh, what's the kind of succession of these keystrokes or click events? Are they too rapid to be human? That requires a lot of time that you don't have in an actual ad transaction to do that measurement. And that forced a lot of sampling. So we just saw a lack of full coverage across the board. And when we were rolling out our product, so we were actually transitioning from being a research consultancy to a product company, we patented an approach that just detects the hardware capabilities. So the difference between data center machine and a human operable machine is the graphics component. That's how we interact with machines is a graphic visualization of what is being computed. And so we patented a five millisecond check that confirms the existence and capability of the graphics hardware and rendering pipeline. And that allowed us to actually do this measurement on 100% of these ad transactions. So the coverage is one aspect that we focus on, is just having that 100% coverage rather than sampling. The data retention, so actually keeping this data for every transaction for over a year, rather than just discarding the logs every seven days. And that 100% measurement with the data retention actually enabled us to give advertisers supply path information. So where did the desired traffic come from and where did the undesired traffic come from? And, you know, it's, it's uh, I'll go back to that airport analogy. You can continue to catch people that have contraband with your scanners, but if you don't do anything about it, then what's the point? If you don't take that contraband off of them, if you don't put a penalty for future infractions, uh, then the behavior is just going to continue. So we really focused uh, on creating a technology solution that solved the problems rather than just putting it out there and seeing what happens. Because we had the experience as consultants and auditors where we saw where the kind of first generation of ad measurement fell short. And so we made sure to cover those gaps when we rolled out our product. Love that. And we've talked about the uh, technology that the bad guys are using and the dark side of tech, but uh, there is a lot of exciting things on the horizon and a lot of positivity and, and tech is making a lot of positive changes out there. So are there any tech trends that particularly excite you in the industry at the moment? Yeah, the shift of a lot of traditional media dollars um, to online is very exciting. Uh, one, just, you know, for us, it's the intellectual challenge of how do we measure these environments um, and seeing more and more content being monetized online uh, definitely has its dangers in terms of misinformation and disinformation being able to slip into the same inventory pools as legitimate content, but seeing the monetization uh, of the online space and just kind of opening the access to information, which is kind of, you know, the whole point of the internet was to enable that open exchange of information, seeing that be monetized more and more, uh, I see as a huge opportunity for making sure that you know, as long as measurement is in place, uh, you can actually make sure that the right content is being rewarded. And I'm curious, how do you see ad tech and, and that whole industry there evolving over the next few years? Is there any patterns that you're seeing? Well, right now in ad tech, we're dealing with a lot of uh, kind of consolidation and uh, monopolistic behavior. Just, you know, we do look at Amazon, the retail website, as one thing. And then we look at Amazon Web Services as another thing. And then now Amazon is, uh, I think, close to second or third largest advertising platform, just given the amount of user information they have, as well as um, access to just computing power. So dealing with privacy laws uh, that are becoming fragmented uh, is going to be a huge challenge across the industry. And I, I do hope that some of that power con concentration among Facebook and Google and Amazon um, does help kind of create more consistent policies. But right now we're dealing with data privacy laws that vary state by state. 
very country by country. Uh, and that makes it very, very complicated when uh, you're doing that location analysis based on IP address. And IP addresses are not any reliable signal of where a person actually is. That's one of the easiest things to change when you're accessing the web. And I appreciate you probably can't share too much, especially with how fast things are moving. But what's next for MMI? So MMI started again as a research consultancy. Then we created an actual verification product. And then given the 100% measurement that we were able to do, we actually just expanded to being a full measurement suite for online advertisers. So we measure their outbound traffic uh, through digital ads. We measure their inbound traffic uh, that's coming to their pages from paid media and actually just kind of assessing the overall internet footprint of any company uh, is what we offer now. And going into our new product, which is called MMI 360, and we're really pushing that to be the comprehensive um, measurement solution in that you know you can actually provide kind of a Bloomberg terminal for web monetization to online advertisers. So being able to not just see where your ads were served and what was the quality of that, but how does that compare against industry trends and traffic patterns around the web so that you know that your dollars and pounds are going to the right place. Uh, I must admit, before you came on the podcast today, I didn't know too much around the world of digital digital measurements. I've learned so much myself today. So I thank you for coming on and sharing your insights. But I am also conscious that we've not even scratched the surface, really, and we will leave a lot of people listening wanting to find out more. So for those people, what's the best way of finding MMI online and also contacting your team if they have um, any questions? You can uh, go to our website. It's www.methodmi.com. And uh, you can reach out either through the uh, sign up page and somebody on our team will get back to you uh, or just send an email to info at methodmi.com. And uh, yeah, we're always happy to talk to people that are interested. It's, it's a very intellectually engaging topic to know that, you know, you have an internet that is 50% non-human initiated traffic and finding some way to create order there uh, is very interesting work. Well, one of the reasons I love recording this podcast every day is learning so much every single day off different people around the world and and leaders, et cetera. And, and like I say, today we've talked, we've covered everything in 20 minutes from ad fraud, ad tech, uh, and how you're helping advertisers with a path to be more successful. And of course, the latest tech trends in the industry. So thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for uh, having to, me. To, Thank you very much. One of the things that stood out for me today was at MMI, they are clearly passionate about their mission to bring trust and transparency into the fragmented online advertising ecosystem. But what also stood out for me was their approach does not start and end with technology, but it's much more about instilling a fundamental understanding of all parts of the digital advertising ecosystem. And they simply believe that advertisers have every right to own, trust and control their own outcomes by gaining the knowledge and tools required to maximise their media investment returns and stay one step ahead of the bad guys. But as I said in the podcast, this is not my area of expertise. So if anybody out there has got similar experiences or anything that you would like to share about ad tech, I invite you to email me techblogwriter at outlook.com, DM me, send me an audio message on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Just at Neil C. Hughes. And my website is, of course, techblogwriter.co.uk. And finally, if you do listen to the podcast on a regular basis and you do enjoy tuning in each day, if you could. I know every podcaster says this, but if you could open up your uh, podcasting app on your phone and leave the show a quick rating and review, it really does help against those pesky algorithms. And if you do listen and you're not a big fan, maybe just hold off on giving that review. It's seriously though, I genuinely appreciate each and every one of you tuning in each day. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.